Welcome back to our AIX podcast, where I'm interviewing all the experts of AIX. The expert here today is Yusuf. Very happy to have you here. Yusuf currently lives in Dubai. He's originally from India and he doesn't look that old, but he already has a really long and very intensive career when it comes to artificial intelligence and especially Gen AI. Yusuf, can you say a few words about yourself, how you came to AI, what you are currently doing and how your career in AI looks like? Nice to meet you, Mark. So my career started back in 2021 when I dropped out of IIT Madras. I was pursuing a bachelor's in AI data science and machine learning, mm -hmm. but then I decided to drop and I joined a popular social media company as an AI data trainer. So that's where things kick started. It was late 2022, I guess, when I first felt the need that there is. So I think there is this problem where I think that people know what AI is, but don't exactly know to what potential AI can be useful in their mm -hmm. lives to uh, make their lives easier. That's where I thought I should get into AI strategy consulting and uh, I need to educate people on AI. Mm -hmm. So already two years ago, you recognized that uh, it has a great potential, but yeah. that uh, people, companies and so on will struggle mm -hmm. to implement this. Yeah, so mostly uh, people from non-technical background and businesses that are not that tech savvy fail to realize the potential uh, of AI into the businesses. But you also, you don't have, do you have a technical background or you have a more business background? Uh, I have more business background. Okay, so yeah. this is the good thing. So you can see there are guys sitting here who don't have a technical background and who are still really passionate about AI now. Yeah, so that's where things started. And I started to educate myself first about what AI is doing, how are the things working. I started something of my own last year. Mm -hmm. And now, as far as I understood, you are basically testing AI tools before they come on the market. So you do a lot also testing of ChatGPT and, and tools like this. So you are really heavily into the tools and you, I guess, understand ChatGPT much better than uh, most other people I'm normally talking with. Uh, yeah, I do. So I, start, uh, so I keep playing with uh, tools, uh, which one is working, uh, which one is not, where do models fail. And then I basically try to break the models and get them to their full potential and then see what tools are suitable for which use cases so that I can help others to save time but not by not doing the job that I do for them. So you also find mistakes in those tools then? Or because normal users like me, they just uh, take this more as granted as it is, but you really find also mistakes in these tools, yeah? Yeah, I do. And I also have published some case studies and some articles on mm -hmm. AIs, failing horribly and there are a lot of tools which break a lot of times so yeah so we have to pay attention yeah yeah what was uh, uh the other question i i mean everyone wants to know about use cases in ai mm -hmm. use cases of chat gpt use cases of other tools i think the many common use cases are well known to to everyone or to to most people especially those watching this channel mm -hmm. but according to you as someone who for the last two years was basically living in or is living in chat gpt yeah. what are really great use cases you can tell about what you would recommend to everyone watching this podcast that they should also try this so first thing is you can use ai in mostly all the aspects of your life be it business be it personal be it studies anything when it comes to business you can pretty much take help from ai in any department you want be it can be in finance it can be in healthcare it can be in uh, operations and customer support everywhere if we talk specifically about chat gpt chat gpt can be helpful in content creation um, in contracting in you know educating people in training people and then a little bit of data analysis as well so there are various use cases that we can you know be models like chat gpt gemini and other large language models. In your private life, we don't talk about your, 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 your job when you are testing these, these tools, but in your private life, how many hours per week are you in ChatGPT? Can you say this? So if I reckon it would be... And, uh, 10 to 15 hours. Hours a week, uh -huh. okay. I guess I spend on ChatGPT working and uh, trying to, you know, make lives easier. So when you talk with ChatGPT, do you have normal conversations or do you always ask questions? Or is it also that you get up and you don't have anyone to talk with and you just talk with ChatGPT? So uh, recently, GPT-40 is there. 
with Foro, you can have casual conversations. That is one thing. But then when I have to do something serious, for example, in terms of, you know, some project or something, then I sit and create full length prompts and then get it to work. Otherwise, I just have normal conversations like I'm on a phone and I'm talking to someone. So it's this you also have, that you're basically talking with ChatGPT as if it would be your friend. Yeah. Can so you give me an example how, how you do it? I mean, on the phone, uh, if I talk with a friend, I talk about my day, I ask questions and so on. So you also talk with ChatGPT that you just had breakfast and uh, that you are now going to uh, to work and that the weather is uh, very hot and that uh, you don't know where to find the bus or what are you what are you talking with your gpt yeah so it's mostly uh, it's like after dinner dinner when i uh, go for a walk i usually connect my birds and then ask gpt of whatever questions i have in mind uh -huh. uh, throughout the day I, i was working on something for example um, i need to create something and i need some insights and uh, some data and some ideas I say, hey, GPT, this is the idea. I need to create this. And uh, can you suggest me something based on this? And I just have a conversation as if I'm having with um, a human. Mm -hmm. So that's how I talk to GPT. That's amazing. Yeah. You are now in AI for about four years. I know. Uh, what was the point in time? I don't know if you, if you have this pivotal <laughs> moment, as I call it, okay. where you, which you remember where you said, okay, this is a technology that will at least change my life and maybe the life of everyone. Do you have this kind of moment? Absolutely, yeah. There was uh, this one moment, I was working for Amazon before joining i and Amazon had this uh, chatbot kind of thing for customers where it could collect data from customers, what their problems are, and then it would suggest the agents working inside the solutions that could be you know offered to mm -hmm. customers and based on ba their previous buying patterns behaviors and stuff like that so that was something so when i got my first hand experience at that model i was like how is this even working it is making life you know much much easier both for the customers mm -hmm. and for the workforce inside big e-commerce giants and pretty much everywhere where customer support is involved uh -huh. that was a point i started to learn more about ai what exactly is this thing which can learn like and then talk like beings that that was the moment great so on aix so far you have one course which is about hr Can yeah. you say a few words about this course? What are you doing there? Who is the audience for this uh, course? Obviously, people from HR. But uh, yeah, give us some insight about this course, please. Yeah, so I do have one course live on the platform, and that is uh, AI and HR practices, which covers... So it is a beginner level course where learners can expect to get knowledge on basics of AI integration in HR. I've also created a list of applications and tools that can be used in various HR processes to uh, automate, uh, you know, routine HR tasks. And also, so from right from onboarding to employee engagement, to uh, training, to customer uh, uh, employee satisfaction, everything, and to offboarding, there is at least one tool for every stage or uh, life cycle of uh, human resource. Mm -hmm. um, and also there is this important topic about ethical use and responsible ai and i've also created a list of prompts that could be helpful for hrs and this course is this course is basically for anyone who is interested in hr this is for you know business owners who mm -hmm. want to implement optimize do want to optimize their hr processes and students and hr professionals as well so for example if i'm a, let's say newcomer in hr or i'm i work at a lower position in hr and i want to make a, career in HR. Does this help me to impress my boss and to show that I'm really interested in HR and that I have better ways of working now? It really does because it tells you how to do a particular job more efficiently and more error-free and risk-free. It, it really helps you to get the job done quicker uh -huh. and with um, optimum accuracy. Yeah, This is uh, what I think is one of the big advantages in the, of AI, of course. Yeah. Uh, why do you think so few HR departments in the moment um, are using AI? I don't know all companies in the world, but according to my knowledge, very few companies are already using AI in HR. Why do you think it is like that? So I think in some areas in HR, AI is being used, for example, resume screening and things like that. Companies are already... Are you think companies, many companies do this already? Yeah, so resume screening and stuff, many companies are doing. So, because I don't know any company who's doing this, especially also my companies, none of them is doing this. <laughs> I just asked with the HR department uh, last mm -hmm. week or a few days ago, they don't even know how to do this. So, you think that most of the at least bigger companies they already do? 
yeah bigger companies are mostly doing this but the problem with companies not being able to implement ai solutions in their businesses are mainly i think one is they do not have ai experts in house mm-hmm. um and there comes the adaptability issue the existing employees are not adequately trained to mm. so you need you need an ai expert in 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 house you cannot do it on your own that you just uh, do trial and error with chat gpt and mm-hmm. somehow do this you need an expert for this yeah so it depends on the size of the company Mm. and uh, i think that let's imagine more than the mid-sized companies i think the, the mm-hmm. huge enterprises they always have solutions exactly but i think most of our viewers are more from uh, mid-sized companies so mm-hmm. where hr department are one two three people but still they have cvs and still they have to find uh, people for new job positions so how can those companies do this uh, so first of all there are two parts to it either you train your own teams uh-huh. on integration of these AI tools and implementation or you hire external experts who can come in sit on the table identify your problems mm-hmm. and then suggest solutions and strategies based on your uh, unique uh, needs okay so if i don't want to spend too much money the key is training exactly so in the uh, cv screening for example i can do this with chatgpt or i need special ai programs for this uh, so chatgpt so screening through chatgpt is not viable in business sense i guess so you'll mostly be needing some applicant tracking systems and uh, you know uh, some specialized software so can mm-hmm. where you can bulk upload and then it can work for you okay clear we have to talk about this again this okay. is i think very interesting for okay. our audience mm-hmm. if you are a person working in a company you hear about ai but you have no idea how to use it you probably know chatgpt from your private life but you don't know how to start this in a, in a company it doesn't matter if you work in marketing in hr or in procurement but you feel that there is a great use case or there's a great need for ai in your daily work but you don't know how to do this and also your boss probably doesn't want this what is your advice to such kind of person how to step by step get used to using ai finding the right use cases and especially also convincing your colleagues and the company to follow your example right so there is this problem which needs to be addressed in the first steps of implementation um what happens is mostly stakeholders with adaptability issues it's difficult to get a buy in from them and they hesitate to you know spend on projects that is already you know up and running as per them but to maximize the efficiency and uh, you know optimize the processes you sometimes need to learn new things in the market and uh, as an employee who will, you know who is there in a company and uh, people and the colleagues do not want to really implement on a whole company level basis i think there can be tools if i would be personally be there i would go on i would research for tools for my specific use cases how can i make my you know work day easier how can i do things quicker and uh, how how can i you know improve overall in terms of accuracy efficiency and uh, what do you think will happen to companies who are not implementing ai because there are some companies who are already pretty good in this according to our research about 80% of which are not using ai at all in the moment some of them or the majority of them plans mm-hmm. to in to invest in this but also some companies are not planning to do so What do you think will happen to those companies in the future who are not doing any AI projects now or in the next uh, weeks? So uh, there was there was this uh, you know tech leader I was talking to the other day and he said that AI will not take your job people using AI will and that is the same case I guess with businesses mm. so AI is not going to take your business but the businesses who are using AI will definitely take over you because they have more Uh, you know advanced technologies they have more a uh, more more amount of data is being analyzed and uh, they are basically doing things quicker than you are you afraid of ai also i mean do you not not as an employee that uh, you will lose your job but if you see what is happening all the new developments uh, mm-hmm. coming are you because you know the programs better than most other people are you only enthusiastic about the things that will come or are you also in a certain way afraid that uh, there could be a uh, misusage and uh, at one point we are uh, powerless uh, in front of all these uh, machines so i had my first hand experience with ai uh, going mm. wild i asked it to you know generate explicit material graphic content mm. and it did and so is the case with businesses ai can be used to you know generate false data and uh, show 
misleading graphs and mm. things like that mm. so i think that's where uh, community sense of uh, developing and using a responsible ai mm. and there, so there are explainable tools coming mm-hmm. in where they can explain their rationale behind making a decision that they made okay understood as you know or if you are testing tools and so on i think you know also you're very interested in knowing what is coming next mm-hmm. if you see for the next weeks or months what do you think are the most exciting tools or use cases that are coming out next uh, if i just see developments of ai what what do you think are the, the products if you have to name two products let's say which are really transformative again which are really shocking which are really bringing great new uh, things to our life what what would you name if you had to name the two products or things or use cases so yeah i'll take open as an example so the advancements are really fast new tools are coming every day you have to stay in the loop to you know uh, get ahead in the ra- race of ai two tools would be again one would be sora it's a video generation text to video model which is coming up in coming you know some months in a couple of months so sora is basically a text to video model where you can you know just type a prompt i need a cat running on a, on top okay. of a building and then it will give you the image it is going to you know revolutionize the whole content creation industry so if i have a, a script for a, for a film like in hollywood i just give it to sora and it gives me the very film yeah exactly yeah. <laughs> okay so we are still you know we need to see to how to what extent it will be will be able to use it that's also for a open when is it coming to market i think, think later this year yeah. later this year yeah. okay amazing so and it's any other any other great tool like this but i'm really excited personally for gpt5 and see uh-huh. what's coming up yeah what's the difference with gpt5 and the gpt we have in the moment so uh, gpt4 is currently so we we had gpt3.5 then gpt4 now we have 4o so gpt3.5 why are these these naming so strange uh, 3 3.5 4 why don't you just say 1 2 3 4 5 why was it like this <laughs> i'm not sure about the naming conventions but i think it might have to do something with previously they had a model called da vinci it was instead of calling it gpt2 they they called it da vinci they also have a lot of you know text generation models but as they developed some more advanced models yeah uh, mm. so gpt3 gpt4 okay understood so gpt5 what is the world breaking items it will bring us so i think uh, what it will bring is much much uh, faster results uh-huh. than gpt4 gpt3.5 was slower gpt4 is much faster than gpt3.5 and i'm really excited to see gpt5 where uh, it takes us and it will also uh, enhance the accuracy the quality of data and you know so the overall race is right now about making it more human like so uh-huh. yeah, we can see more natural responses uh, yeah, i've seen these videos from open ai yeah, yeah. Think, so. <laughs> okay so last but not least in the moment you have one course on our platform i yes. hope that there will be more courses coming from you do you have any ideas uh, what might be next so i have already been planning for uh, next courses currently it's in hr so some more courses on hr some advanced courses where we talk about specific use cases the tools and maybe some run throughs of the tools that we introduce and then apart from hr i'm planning to have some courses on automation mm-hmm. so how automation can change uh, you know the whole business landscape it's already uh, yes. doing its job but then how can small and mid sized businesses can use the power of ai based automation and uh, optimize their operations and streamline their operations and optimize their costs right looking forward to this so yusuf thank you very much for coming and uh, it's a pleasure. i would love to see uh, more videos from you in the short future future not only courses but also some videos where we really discuss uh, some use cases where you show us uh, use cases of ai i'll be happy to uh, yeah, i have a lot of knowledge in this thanks I'll a lot happy. all the best yeah thank you